Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Caravan and Motorhome Club's Bolton Abbey site with this, the new Ford Nugget Plus, Ford's own camper van but the new longer version based on the L2 version of the Transit Custom. So instead of 4.97 metres long of the standard Nugget, this one is 5.34 metres. Still just over 2 metres, 2.06 metres to be precise, high with the roof down and it does look very automotive, doesn't it? Lots of standard kit such as the awning, the alloy wheels, these static cornering lights which are very, very useful at night. It's a very neat little package. You've got these flush windows down the side with just these small opening sections which we'll have a look at later on. Prices for this model start at just over 70 grand, onto which you'll have to add 780 pounds if you want metallic paint. This one's called chrome blue and it gives a nice restrained sort of classy look to the vehicle. If you want something brighter, there are brighter options, but I think all the metallics are 780 pounds. Another option are these little running boards, 720 pounds for those, and they're not that easy if you're, if you're not careful getting in and out. You need to sort of have your feet sideways on those when you get in and out, otherwise you could slip. They're not like a full width step that you'd get on certainly a larger motorhome and a lot of camper vans where they have a slide out step. So do be careful if you're using those and you're not that steady on your feet. Otherwise, what can I tell you about this? Well, the Nugget in all its forms is built by Westphalia. It's marketed through Ford's own dealerships, but as I say, it's not built in-house, it's built by Westphalia, and Westphalia have, well, decades of experience, and they've built, been building Nuggets for Ford for well over 20 years. But you can see the Westphalia branding throughout the vehicle, and that certainly gives a sense of quality. Again, something we'll come back to later on. What you won't get, of course, when you buy your Ford Nugget is a lovely number plate like this. As for engine options, you can choose from the 130 PS engine with a six-speed manual gearbox. That's the entry-level unit. You can upgrade then to a 150 PS power unit, 148 bhp in the old English brake horsepower. Um, and that comes with a choice of six-speed manual gearbox or, as here, the six-speed automatic. It looks much the same down the near side too, with the same flush glazing, this automotive look with no fancy graphics, stripes or anything like that. It just looks like a Torneo people carrier, apart from the Nugget Plus logos. The only thing that gives it away that you've got a camper van is your fresh water filler. Now the water tanks, both fresh and waste, are inboard and they're 42 litres each. So you won't have to worry about those freezing up if you do brave a bit of winter camping. And I think the geese that are flying over are agreeing with me on that point. Mains hook up in the rear corner there and then a glazed rear tailgate. But where this van differs from the California, the Marco Polo, and most other vans of this type, is that you can walk straight through the middle of it. And of course that's a big plus of the Nugget Plus, because, well, if you buy one of the other OEM camper vans from VW or Mercedes, your sliding door is on the off side perhaps not so great on the school run if you have to park in the street. On the other hand, if you buy a UK built camper van, normally the sliding door is on the near side. Great, you might be thinking. But what about if you go abroad? Then suddenly, in the most unfamiliar places, your door is now on the wrong side. So what could be better than having doors on both sides? Fantastic. Now we're round the back of the Nugget Plus and I think it's time to pop up the roof. But before I do that, I'll just point out that you get front and rear parking sensors as standard on this vehicle. Now, to push up the roof, all you do is undo a catch at the back of the roof and push. Simple as that. It's not electric like the California Ocean's roof, but it doesn't need a great deal of effort. And unlike the California and so many other campers of its ilk, the roof is hinged the other way around. 
and having pushed up the roof, you simply have to push the roof bed out of the way. That has gas struts at the front, and then you just need to clip it in place, the strap each side that holds it up. And now, at the back here, you've got over 2.4 metres of headroom. Look at it, it's massive. And then if you want to get more light in the vehicle, well, you need to be quite tall to reach this one. But you've got a nice big window in the back of the roof, really lets a lot of daylight into the rear kitchen area. And then on either side, you've got these mesh panels for when it's hot and you want to let in lots of lovely fresh air. Now, as I said, the awning is standard, so we might as well take advantage of it. On the tailgate is your outdoor table, and stored in the rear corner here, your outdoor chairs and this is a big plus over the standard nugget because yes in the standard nugget you do get a pair of outdoor chairs but when I tested that van didn't really find anywhere convenient to keep the outdoor chairs so I ended up leaving them at home. The extra length in this van means that they store neatly in the back corner. For a cuppa and actually today this is more about keeping the few spots of rain off me than keeping the the sun from burning my skin but hey that's Britain for you what it does do is give you a bit more campsite real estate under cover and you can sit out whatever the weather the thing I should say too is that these chairs are really rather good. Certainly a lot more comfortable than the ones you get in a California. By now you'll be thinking, well, what's all the fuss about? It's just a longer nugget and you get slightly better storage for your chairs. Well, it's more than that. What's the plus of the nugget plus? I'm sitting on it. The added convenience of, well, a convenience. Here you have a bench cassette toilet, servicing is just via that removable flap and it has its own reservoir for the flush tank. Not very private is it? Well of course it isn't with the tailgate open but with the tailgate shut and the curtains drawn you just pull this screen across and it's as private as these things get in a small camper van. Certainly a lot more private than using a cassette toilet in the middle of the floor area in a California or any other VW camper with the side kitchen layout. Now gents, you can probably see that, especially if you're of a larger build, that, well, it's probably not that practical to stand up. You may need to sit down. But when you've done what you need to do, there is a proper wash basin with hot and cold water. You don't need to use the kitchen sink. Better still, forgetting about that, if you need to have a good hose down of your boots or wash the dog or something, there's an outside shower as well. Just retrieve the shower attachment from the wardrobe or wherever else you decide to store it, click it into place. You even get a mounting for the shower head which you can attach inside of the tailgate or just attach it to the side of the van. How neat is that? Now the tailgate is a useful entrance on site but it's worth noting that although there's a strap to close it from inside, 
you can't actually now get back out that way. However, we're now in the kitchen area. This isn't just about the loo. And it does feel quite a bit more spacious than in the standard nugget. The basic arrangement is very, very similar. L-shaped kitchen on this side, wardrobe over here and a bit of storage as well. But the, the basic arrangement, as I say, is very, very similar to a nugget. But the nugget plus, with that extra length of the vehicle, it just feels a lot more spacious back here. So what have you got? Well, here is your top loading fridge, 40 litres, compressor model, of course, and there's a little stay to keep the door open so you're not trying to balance it open when you're uh, retrieving the milk or whatever. Here, standard camper van fitment of a two burner hob with spark ignition and a splash guard to protect your curtain. A sink, but unusually, of course, that has hot and cold water quite a big plus. Now the hot water comes from a boiler, you just flick it on and off here, that's buried underneath the kitchen, we'll show you that later on, but it's a 3 litre 12 volt boiler so you can use it wherever you are really. Reasonable amount of work, worktop space, although bear in mind that this is the door into your fridge, you've got a bit of worktop here between the hob and the sink, not bad for a little camper van. Decent cutlery drawer and then there's Cupboards, you will be bending down to get things out of these, but everything feels beautiful, beautiful quality. Over on the other side, the wardrobe, when I first looked at this van, when it first arrived from Ford, I looked at that wardrobe and thought, you're not going to get anything in there because the hanging rail is, well, I doubt it's much more than a centimetre across. But if you use these old fashioned metal coat hooks, the sort that um, used to do as radio aerials for your Ford Cortina in about 1974, then well I've got two, uh, three shirts, a pair of jeans and a jacket in there and I think I could probably fit a couple more items if I needed to. Um, so that's actually quite useful hanging space. If you want to hang some clothes it's practical for that. Now this is the bit that you really gain over the standard nugget. Quite a really generous shelved uh, space on. I've got camera bags in here primarily, but if you were camping normally, it would be folded clothes, extra, extra uh, food storage perhaps, little cupboard underneath, another one alongside, and then this useful top locker, top loading locker, which I found ideal for food, things like packets of crisps, cereal packets, I've got my little coffee maker in there. So good practical space and again there's a little bit more work top again but bear in mind that of course that space you'll need to lift if you want to get anything out of there. And then just look at the finish, it's all very very automotive with these mouldings around the windows, around the tailgate, even around here and the curtains, even the curtains um, just fit beautifully, everything is absolutely top-notch quality. Lighting, where you've got these stalk reading lights, of course, they'll double up as serving for the upstairs bed when you're using that. They just fold flat um, when the roof comes down. And they've actually got, I think it's two or three settings of brightness, um, so you can adjust them if you don't want it to be too bright in the evening. Not only does the Nugget have twin sliding doors, but it's got a three-person back seat, and it's a really generous width. It's got Isofix on the two outer positions as well, so you can have two child seats back here. And for adults, while it's comfortable, it's got a nice rake to the backrest, there's a slight slope even to the base here, and of course high back with this headrest going right the way across. Plenty of legroom, so a comfortable place for rear passengers. And then when you get on site, it's quite easy to spin the cab seats around as long as they're fairly upright. You don't have to open the cab doors. Your day vehicle into your lounge area on site. Of course, the cab seats are height adjustable too. And then if you want to add the table, the leg stores under the seat here, and there's a good amount of storage under here. If you just pull that catch, and there's actually a stay to hold it up. And oh, we've got things like a mains lead, water hose, 
um, silver screens for the cab windows. I've got a bag of clothes and laptop bag in there as well. And then here's the table leg. Slots into the floor and twists till it's nice and tight. Retrieve the table. And then there's a catch on the underside of the table to tighten it to the leg. Just for once, we've got an island leg table that doesn't feel as if it's going to tip your soup in your lap. That back seat is also fully removable, although it does weigh 64 kilos, so don't attempt it on your own. But if you wanted a big load space in the front of the vehicle here, you could do that. Table, let's say it works well, but in addition to the strip light and this floor lighting, here's a novelty, a sort of removable light. Just plug it into one of the 12 volt sockets most conveniently here over the table and you can use it as reading light for the cab seats. I found that quite quite a bonus last night when I was sitting in here reading. And then, well, this is another Westphalia style feature. You've got your fridge, your heating, that's diesel fired heating blown air, all operated from here and you can check your water levels and your battery levels and check that you're plugged into the mains correctly. Um, all from this simple control panel. Looks a bit like a radio, doesn't it? But, uh, well, the radios used to look like that. The next thing to show you is the bed. And of course, in a typical side kitchen camper van, it would just be a matter of usually sliding the seat forward and folding it flat in some way. Here, it is very similar, surprisingly. But first of all, you have to have the cab seats either facing forwards or facing inwards and pushed right forward towards the dashboard. Next job is simply slide the rear seat forward as far as it'll go. And then fold it flat. And then the next job is this panel here lifts up by a leg, clips in. And then you have a very flat bed that is 1.9 metres long by 1.25 metres at the head end, narrowing to just over a metre, 1.03 metres, where your feet go. Now, this is the interesting thing, because your feet actually go underneath the kitchen. Plenty of room over on this side of the bed. Here, it's slightly more restricted, because hung underneath the kitchen is that little three litre electric boiler. Now, I slept this side last night and I was okay, but I've only got quite small feet. If you had big feet and you at all, you might find it a bit of an issue. Um, so it's one to try, or maybe whoever's shorter or who has the smaller feet sleeps this side. And then, of course, you've still got the roof bed as well. You can use that both both beds to make a four berth, or alternatively just sleep up there when the weather's warm enough. I still got access through to the toilet. This part is quite narrow where the kitchen um, is opposite this little side cupboard. And um, that's again, something that you need to try for yourself. Now I really like the sleeping arrangements in this van because it leaves the kitchen area quite undisturbed still. So, as with the lounge, kitchen, lounge, quite separate. What I'm not so keen on is if it was a hot summer night, and this is March in Yorkshire, so it's, I'm not having any hot evenings, that is all your ventilation. You haven't got proper sliding windows. The other thing that works really well with this arrangement is that you can store all your bedding in here, your duvet, pillows and everything, and then when you made the bed, just unfurl it across the bed and everything's ready to go. So bedding storage is excellent. And then underneath here, so bear in mind this is the kitchen on top and then this is your void for your bedding. Underneath there, you've got your two water tanks, fresh and waste, and also your gas storage, one camping gas cylinder in there. 
Now, with a lot of VW campers and similar, you have to be fairly athletic to get into the roof bed because it usually means clambering onto the cab seats. Here, however, there's a ladder. So just go up the ladder. Last rung is the top of the kitchen unit. Up here, you have a double bed that's 2.02 metres by 1.33 metres. So a really generous size. It's on these plastic froley springs as well for added comfort. You've got loads of headroom. You've got these reading lights. The only thing is, it's canvas sides, so you won't want to be here in the middle of winter. I think that's just about covered the camping side of things. Time to pack up and go for a drive. So, driving this Ford Transit Custom. Well, I should say from the outset that you can't now buy one quite like this. In here, we've got the 185 PS engine, which is no longer available. Now, Ford tell me that's not an emissions thing. It's just a product decision. Um, so, if you buy a Nugget Plus now with the automatic gearbox, it comes with 150 PS. Should still be plenty, frankly. Um, this one goes like a rocket ship when you want it to. Well, for a camper van it does. Um, it's very smooth, very quiet. There is a lovely, lovely lack of any noise from the habitation area behind me. Oh, I've got a strange little rattle that's coming from the dashboard area somewhere and I haven't been able to fathom where it's from. But when you go over potholes and bumps, there's no clatter. No rattle. Ah, oh, lovely. What else? Well, it rides well. I think the long wheelbase helps there. Um, camper van size, so it just feels like a big car, really, most of the time. Um, you've got good forward visibility, good side mirrors with the blind spot lenses. But I have to say, the centre mirror, because the height of the back seat, when you're manoeuvring, or when you're just trying to see what's behind you, is... There's not a lot, it's a little bit of a, a letterbox type view out of the back window. So it's a shame that this 8 inch screen doesn't include a reversing camera. That is an option, I think it's a £250 option, or you can have it as part of a pack, um, but it doesn't come as standard. The automatic gearbox is very, very smooth, six ratios, but who needs more than that really? I should say these seats are excellent too and you can refine the driving position nicely because this small leather bound steering wheel is reach and rake adjustable. Seats have lumbar adjustment, twin armrests and you can really toast your derriere with the standard heated seats. In addition to the running boards and the metallic paint that I've already mentioned, this vehicle has one other option as far as the cab's concerned, and that's the Ice Pack 25 that comes in at £912. It gives you the sat nav. You do get this sort of display, the eight inch display, but not the sat nav as standard. It also gives you uh, speed sign recognition, so you get a display of the uh, speed limit wherever you're driving in the instrument cluster, which is quite handy. And the final thing it gives you is adaptive cruise control. Now you get cruise control, standard cruise control as standard, um, but the adaptive cruise worked really, really well coming up a, a busy A1 the other night. Uh, driving made very, very easy. And also I found just cruising up the A1, 70 where I could, um, a lot of the time a bit less, um, I was getting over 40 miles to the gallon. Now that's dropped to just over 37 um, with more um, of these sort of twisty local roads but still the fuel economy does seem quite impressive for this type of vehicle. So what's my final verdict on this new Ford camper van? Well the first thing I have to say is don't buy a Ford Nugget. No, 
if you work for Ford, don't have a heart attack because my next piece of advice is if you're looking for a transit custom based camper van, seriously, seriously consider the Nugget Plus. The extra space in the kitchen, the convenience of having the loo when you're out in the middle of nowhere like this. And it just seems to work so much better than the standard Nugget. Yes, I still wouldn't buy this as a family vehicle. I see it as a couple's van because of the storage, but this now has to be one of my favorite Ford Transit Custom camper vans.